found me. I remember it. Mm. Oh, no. The ship had left. I was on the rocks below the wall. So he took me to this woman. All I know is I am what I am because of it. I didn't want you to leave me here. And it's a horror because I lost you still. Hello? Can you see it now? If you're not going to get me across, then you just have to forget me. I'll forget you. <laughs> you forget me. Am I ever going to see you again? Aaron, um, first off, thank you for your time. Thank you for the opportunity of uh, for the interview. For I know you're busy, as, as anyone is. And and uh, first of all, uh, congratulations on this epic score. That I, uh, when I honestly, when I when I spoke to Nicholas, I told him that the first thing that I did when I when I you know when I finished watching the movie was just. I remember I got something on the on the media kit that it was available on Spotify, so let me look for it and, and just save it. So I want to congratulate you on the on the epic score because that, to me that's one of uh, I have told Nicholas that's one to me one of, one of the standouts, uh, one of the brightest things of the of the movie. So congratulate you on it. I'm going to congratulate you on it. So yeah, I think the first so question much. has to be, um, what was your first thought? You know when Nicholas proposed you to be back, you know, to compose the, the 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 music of the story, and when you read the script, this world that that he wanted to create. What was your first reaction? Uh, well, so I mean, Nick and I have been uh, friends for for a while now. We we've done a few film projects together, so uh, we you know we we're we're really comfortable just like sharing so, anything that comes to our heads. So. Uh, but when he when he shared the script to me a, a while back, years ago, it was very, very different. It, it was much longer. It was like this entire world. And honestly, the first time I read that like original script, I mean, my head was spinning. I was like, wow, man. I mean, it was like hundreds and hundreds of pages. I was like, dude, you I, I, I thought we were just, I thought this was just, you know, a movie about X, Y, Z. But like this is this is a world, you know, and I, mm -hmm. I, I was I almost wasn't ready for it. And uh, so I like had to reread it and. The more I got immersed in it, um, yeah, the more we started talking about it, and uh, lots of lots of edits were happening. The script was getting shorter as he was showing people, and and we started to finally narrow down to some um, just some sort of sounds. We have similar inspirations, sort of uh, of like just sonic textures. Like we we like we like strings. Mm -hmm. We like sort of um, soundscapes based on like. Um, just sound textures and like like we really think in like textures and uh, things that we like and and also melody. Um, so really, to me, the first thing I did when I, when I read the script, I was like, okay, there's these clear, you know, you have like Hayden, you have uh, Moira, you have you know all these characters, and we thought it'd be really cool if if each of them had kind of like their own theme. Um, so you know, which is common, obviously, and. In, in, lots of uh movies but it was it was a really like we really took a subtle approach it's not you know it's uh i, I appreciate th that you like it so much and, and it's it feels really epic um because we we we're both minimalists i think when it comes to music and as far as textures and themes go so these melodies and stuff they were very simple really simple stuff like after reading the script it was like little piano notes mm -hmm. little you know, little string textures that that just played very, very, very simple melodies because, um, and it's actually funny, the first time I read the script, I had no visual reference for what the movie was. He had some concept design, you know, but I mean, this was before the movie was shot. And if, if, you, uh, if you've read anything about the story of how the movie was made, I mean, mm -hmm. this thing w was shot in, you know, uh, you know a warehouse and right. and like like it's just so epic looking you know there there were some locations you know nova scotia and all that but but a lot of these shots were in warehouses so like even when they were shooting it i still didn't have that much of a visual reference of like just how mind-blowingly epic this thing was gonna look 
And so everything was so simple, you know, and then the more footage I saw and the more visual effects came through, um, it just got to be way more epic, but we still kept the minimalism of just, you know, letting, letting the visuals kind of speak for themselves. And uh, so, yeah, it was after reading the script, I would say it's just kind of coming up with simple melodies uh, to sort of draw your attention to certain characters, uh, keeping that minimalism and just playing with the soft, nice, soft, big, long textures. That's kind of what came to my mind and ended up working out. Um, so, I don't want you know. to blush, but I'm, what I want to say, but I, I told Nicholas when we when interviewed him, when I, when obviously, oh, no. one, one, no, <laughs> one of the things that to me, once I, obviously I, I, I finished watching the movie, but I, 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 I told him, you know, I, I, I'm putting this score right up there with, you know, one of my favorite composers like Hans Zimmer or John Williams because of how, how everything was, uh, com you know, everything was done, produced. So I, again, I, I think I'm gonna, I gotta congratulate you on that because it, it was, the score is pretty good. And to me, it's an award-winning score. I told, you know, big man, oh, you know, this, this, this should go somewhere because if the score is really good. Um, what, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm throwing you this with, um, because I'm going in this direction with the with the question. What was your inspiration for you know for the different melodies? Because I see, I, you know, I see, uh, I, I feel something from Femra. I feel something from you know, uh, you know, uh, Close Cancer for a Take Kind. You know, th those I I see those movies, you know, being some type of a inspiration for uh, some of the tracks. So what was your, what what where do you find your inspiration for the tracks? Uh, well, so it's funny you bring up Hans. We uh, we talk, <laughs> Mr. Zimmer. I don't know what it's you know. We call him Hans. We just short our shorthand. We just call him Hans. You know, the Hans like method of something. And and why I come back to say minimalist and simplicity. I think when you uh, obviously Hans Zimmer scores are huge. I mean they're they're big. They're huge. But really, when you when you watch him work, he, you know, because there's plenty of. Um, material online where he, he kind of explains his process and you mm -hmm. see his big studio with his giant modular rig and his synths and his you know all this stuff but really when it comes down to it if you watch him work and hear him explain it's it starts so simple it's just music is a conversation music is you know especially in the uh context of movies it's music is characters and places and things like that it's not He's not um, composing like you know, say a, a Mozart or a Beethoven would would compose, you know, something like that. It's it's there's a lot more context that you have to keep in mind. So the Hans Zimmer, it's funny you bring him up. That just um, he his his really he starts simple. He, you know, he starts somewhere tangible that relates with the context. You know, a character or a, mm -hmm. a place. Um, mm -hmm. So so that's that's definitely he was a huge inspiration, and we watched a lot of material. Uh, Tons of uh, wine and cheese table discussions with Hans Zimmer. That was a lot, quite a few of those. Um, and then me, honestly, me personally, it's funny. I, I I kind of feel like an outsider a lot of times in the in the film world because a lot of my inspirations um, actually sort of come from uh, video games and um, and sort of popular music as well. Like one of my favorite one of my favorite musicians artists of all time is uh, a man named Koji Kondo. He composed like the music for like the Legend of Zelda mm -hmm. series and you know Mario and all that stuff. And uh, I mean honestly, like the Legend of Zelda series has is a massive, massive, massive inspiration on any type of music I make. So you know something like that always comes in. Um, and Nick knows that Nicholas he he he's super psyched about that and he he kind of shares that. And then um, but I would say like uh, my biggest like direct inspiration uh, besides that um, that relates to the film world is Johnny Greenwood just because I've been a Radiohead fan since I was a kid and uh, when he sort of delved into the film world that it, he sort of did that at the same time that I was um, sort of like toying around with with uh, you know composing for for film and when I actually met Nicholas back in like 2008 um he had johnny greenwood had done like these two huge scores i think uh there will be blood was one of them and it was just like super and that kind of to me was like oh man i can do this you know this is a guy that was in my favorite rock band and mm -hmm. he's doing film scores like i was like okay maybe there's a you know a way to do this and it, it yeah just it's that sort of thing where you see someone open the door and then you're like oh okay there is a door i, I can walk through this and so yeah so Hans with that good that starting out simple you know and, and relatable with with the movie and then obviously video games are, are just my 
biggest inspiration. And then, yeah, good old John and Greenwood. I mean, he's just, I, I don't know what there, what else there is to say about him, but he's, he's a genius. He, he plays with textures and melody and all of my favorite ways. And so, yeah. I, you know, it's funny that you mentioned video games because that's something towards the end of my interview with Nicholas, I told him one of the things that, you know, my first reaction to the movie was this story and this world that he created is begging to be turned into a video game. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm thinking, I also review video games, obviously, on my on my oh, cool. the outlet. So I, I do both movies and video games. And, and I, you know, I preview a lot of video games from Anapurna Games, so Anapurna Interactive, and obviously, I, I, I and, and Telltale Games, those that, that those, those story-driven games are, are, are to yep. me, are really are fun to play because you're living the story. And I told him, you know, I, I, I that's something that I felt. I felt that all the characters in the movie were like just basically characters that, you know, no playable characters. They're just, they're just there. Yeah. And you're 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 moving you as the inspector are just moving around them with them and I, I told him you know try to pitch it to an Apurna to see if they can turn it into a video game because I think this will blow away people will blow away with the, the story yeah. that is and the world that he wants to he tried to create so I, I I I you know it's funny that you mentioned video games yeah. as an inspiration because I saw it you know that's something yeah. I it's so funny the way the movie sometimes that the pacing is I, I, like oftentimes there's like the only thing going on musically it's just like the sustained string or something mm -hmm. and it's funny because like a lot of rpgs that i've played video games and a lot of like action rpgs and stuff sometimes you know when you're sitting there like deciding on which text to respond with you know or something like mm -hmm. when you're when you're trying to make a decision there's this string note in the background kind of you're like it, it's kind of it, it felt that way too yeah i feel i feel a strong uh video game uh connection there as well <laughs> obviously to me I, I told us that the score plays a bit of you know an important role in the movie to me the movie the story the movie the, 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 the score is just nothing it's just one of what the, the story and the score go hand in hand what you know what input did nicholas had with you did he play the hand in hand when we're doing the you know the, so this is a really extensive score it's not five six you know you, you did a really good job with all the different different uh tracks did nicolas gave you the input on hey maybe i want this in here and that how how did that how did that score came about with with the for the movie so that's a good question i mean it was definitely very intertwined the whole time so uh there basically two there's like a two-part answer to that the first part is that basically when we were creating like i said kind of in the beginning when I was just sort of coming up with little melodies, little things like that. What basically what we would do is I would fly to New Jersey and I would spend like five or six days. I'd bring like my interface, my my computer, my hard drives, keyboards, all kinds of stuff. And I would basically, we would just sit there in the same room together in his office in New Jersey where while he's like editing visual effects shots and scheduling shoots and doing all this other stuff in the movie, I was basically just sitting there kind of playing stuff with headphones and then I'd be like, hey, listen to this, you know, and I would kind of play something for him. Uh, and basically it was just, it was kind of just a thing where I would like gauge his reaction and, and gauge, you know, what, what he was feeling. And sometimes there was this big aha moment where it was like, <laughs> like the main theme, like, uh, like the um, Moira uh, and Lawrence's theme, like the, uh, it's like, da, da, da. really simple, three notes. I literally, I just, I, w I wasn't even, like showing him and I was just messing around, like testing out a sound. And he's on his computer and he just goes, <laughs> and he just, he just gravitated these three notes. And, and, um, and, and that's the thing about, about Nicholas is he's like, you know, when it comes to music, he's in a, he's such a music fan and appreciator and he knows so much about music. But when it comes to like, you know, technical, like, you know, music theory and stuff like that, he doesn't really know much, which was funny at first because he would try to use musical terms. And I was like, man, that's not it. But actually, in, it ended up being awesome because if you, let's say you had two music theory nerds in the same room, like, I don't know if we really would have come up with anything that emotionally impactful. So really, it was like me, like kind of the musical person, and then him as like the movie creator, but also sort of just a, an appreciator of music. And so he would just give me these like snap judgments and reactions and emotional feedback on it. And so that's that's like how a lot of it was written. A lot of the themes were kind of agreed upon and decided upon, like me flying to New York, uh, New Jersey, 
playing stuff and just kind of feeling that energy between him and what what I played. And then, of course, beyond that, I would sort of produce the melodies out, you know, put string beds beneath them and, and adding pianos and, and things like that. So that was one thing. And then the second thing, which is much more connected to what you're going to see on February 5th when the movie comes out, is, yeah, Nick, he's he's an editing mastermind. He's a genius as far, you know, as far as uh, everything he works on goes. And and the music was very much a part of that. You know, he, a lot he, he would... Um, I would give him, you know, and, and a lot of the scenes, like I said, where it's a lot of tension, a lot of, you know, just plucks happening here and there, really subtle things. I definitely, we talked about it and I was like, yeah, you have the freedom to, you know, to sort of lengthen this thing or, or cut it shorter. And then he would show me and if it made musical sense and, and it really, if it added to the emotional uh, or the drama of what was going on, then that's the most important thing. You know, I, I was never like, uh, no, that's a, supposed to be a major chord, and and we can't end it on a minor third. It was uh, never like that, you know. He, he had control over over that, and he would run it by me, and I was like, yeah, man, it, it adds to the drama. Go ahead with the editing, and and so a lot of it. Uh, so Nick was, for not being a musician, he was very involved, and I think he d- he did an amazing job, you know, from from beginning to end. So yeah. Actually, I think my my last question is tied into that to that answer, and. I, I have that question written down that's how I was going to finish this interview. Uh, what was your reaction when you saw the final product? I mean, when you saw everything put together and, you know, what, what what's your final thought? What, how did you feel when you finally see the whole product all together? Well, uh, it's, so it's really funny. I, again, like I was saying, when, when I first read the script, I had no footage to reference. I had no, it was just, Nick was like, yes, yeah, so there's going to be blue screens and then we're going to key them out and we're going to and it all just flew over my head and I was like, okay. It took me way too long to really finally land, honestly, at like what the gravity of it. Like once I, but once I saw that first VFX shot of, um, they showed me of Moira and Lawrence sitting on the rock when, when uh, Moira's telling Lawrence about the dream, uh, I freaked out. I was like, oh, wow, this is, okay. I thought this was just like, you know, I thought it was just this beautiful, like, kind of fantasy love story in, like, a city. Or what, but, like, th- I mean, this is, I was like, this is Lord of the Rings level. Like, like this is a world, and it's, it's you know, there's humans in it, but it looks like, it's, what is this, Greece? What is this, Mars? Where, where are, you know? So that's when it really dawned on me. Uh, when I saw that, I, was, I freaked out. But so the final product, um, there were still a couple shots that I hadn't seen with the final VFX in it. So I, when I saw that, the final product... First of all, with with the music, there was there was some stuff that was different, and that it blew me away. I was like, oh, because th- there there was actually one piece where there was like this part in it that I wasn't super satisfied with, and uh, in the final product, it was actually that one little piece. It just happened to work with the uh, progression of the scene. It got cut out, and something else was was just scooted, and and it was it was amazing. So I was like super pleasantly surprised. Um, and yeah, I mean. I, really it's i think the thing that uh the best part about it was there was a solid 30 minutes in the middle where i was watching and i completely forgot about like like my critical ear just went away and i was just like watching a movie and i think and i kind of like noticed myself doing it. i was like okay i think this i think the movie's ready because like when you uh can watch something that you were a part of and sort of just drift away and and become just a a you know, an audience member. I think that's that's when you know that you uh, you were a part of something that was really positive and successful. And and um, yeah, so that that was honestly my, my impression on seeing the final product. And just thinking back to like going to New Jersey and all this stuff, we're just like living in an office and playing piano notes. And then to seeing that, I mean, it, it was just like yeah, it gets me emotional just thinking about it. I mean, it was it was a good time and honestly just to have you uh you know sitting here bre- evoking the name of hans and 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 just you know saying so many kind things like that's the award right there for me so you know it's it's really awesome yeah but hey before thanking you again for your time i'm gonna end this by you know i'm gonna end this by saying this um I, it's just how, how it feels i have to put the score on top where you know where williams and where simmer is because 
Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of music. I, I told Nicole, as I told you in the beginning of the yeah. interview, I'm a fan of music. And this core, it, it resonated with me because I just felt that it works. It doesn't matter in what scenario you are. You should just put it on the background and you can just, you know, chill to it or work to it. I, I, that's, that's something that I told Nicholas. I, when I'm working, I need music. I, I, there's no way that I can, you know, work on, an, on a, you know, quiet, empty space because I feel yeah. lost. So that's when I think it stood out for me. When I, when I, when I finished watching the movie, I, you know, I was like, I need, I need this, I need this score. I need to save it somewhere so I can look for it wherever I'm doing shorts around the house or I'm doing some editing. Even the people tell me, I, I, I told this, but what, uh, what I was speaking to, to Nicholas, um, even though I'm editing, I'm, if I, even though I'm listening to something that I'm editing, I, I need some music in the background so I can, yeah. you know, submerge myself in work at time. Right. So I, just to block the outside um, noise. And I think that's yeah. what the, the score did. And to me, that's a good score. When, that, when the score blocks outside noise, you, you know, mm -hmm you as a composer and I'm talking about yourself, but you think you need to know, okay, I did a good job here. I think this uh, yeah. is really score when, when it, you know, gets everything done. So that's, that's to me, you know, one of the most important things, just it works. It works, it doesn't matter in, in you know, in, in which scenario you put it. That's a, I'm thinking, put it on a video game, you don't need to change the score. You <laughs> on the video game, it's just gonna yeah. work. It's just gonna work. So, Thank um, you. So congratulations on the score, and and I obviously I wish I wish you the best of luck, and you and Thanks. yourself and Nicholas on the on the movie. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, as I told him, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of my audience who basically have with the specific the same types that I do, love this whole fantasy world. Like you said, the, yeah. the Lord of the Rings type of world. So they're gonna, yeah. you know, submerge themselves in the story and in, in this movie. And, and I'm pretty sure that you're gonna get a lot of uh, positive. Uh, reviews and, and, and thoughts about your score. So again, congratulations on that score and, and thank you for your time uh, for the interview. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. And hey, I just if, but I want to say one more thing before we go. It's, 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 I like how you said that you, you know, you put it on in the background and stuff. And I, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, Nicholas and I worked to put it on Spotify because what you hear in the movie is is a lot like i said it's the bits that worked you know with the drama of the film but it's really cool that uh it was nicholas's idea that, to put this on spotify because it's the original what you hear on spotify is like basically the original pieces that i wrote you know the, the full pieces that like from beginning to end um so if yeah if you like what you you know hear in the movie it's it's uh it's you can kind of hear the more the full uh, like musical ideas that we sort of uh, made up in New Jersey and while we were creating the film. So um, yeah, I'm glad that you said that, you know, just put it on the background, you know, that's, yeah. that's really and I'm, cool. I'm going to put a link on the description of this video to the Spotify so that the people that are seeing this interview can go and save it and just play it over and over. As I have I've already watched like the, the past two days, I just put it there. <laughs> when, when I'm working here, I just put it there and just leave it, put it, leave it on. And, and just yeah. uh, enjoy it. And also, I have I have a little bit of an exclusive. I I know uh, Nicholas sent me the 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 the, video, the YouTube video with everything. All yes, together. the official so, audio visual. So the audio visual. So I got the exclusive for for that one. So I'll, I'll put that whenever the yeah. boss Nicholas also asked me to put it on the on the video. So again, that's all Nicholas, for, man. He he crushed yeah. it. He cr yeah. that visual is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you again for your time and and congratulations on the score. Thank you so much, Rafi. All right.